Welcome to Growing Chatham, North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center's December 2021 podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock. Our office will be closed December 23rd, 24th, 27th, and the 31st in observance of the Christmas and the New Year holiday. Do you own a farm here in Chatham County? Are you enrolled in the Chatham County Voluntary Agricultural District Program? If not, Chatham County is accepting applications for the Voluntary Agricultural District Program. To find out more, visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. Visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221. Are you still looking for a Christmas tree? Download the Visit North Carolina Farms app and start your search from there. Jordan Lake Christmas Tree Farm is a participating farm on the Visit North Carolina Farms app. You can find that perfect Christmas tree at their farm. Did you know Jordan Lake Christmas Tree Farm offers more than just Christmas trees? During the warmer season, they offer fresh cut flowers for sale. Need to get away from the hustle and bustle? Jordan Lake Christmas Tree Farm also offers overnight lodging at the farm. For more details, click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221. Tis the season for holiday cookie making with 4-H. Looking for some new holiday cookie recipes? Let 4-H help. Check out the recipe book at the Growing Chatham newsletter that includes over 20 tasty recipes from 4-H members across the country. Is crafting more your style? Check out the 4-H at Home Holiday Activity Guide for ideas on how to create one-of-a-kind care packages for veterans, turn yarn into festive ornaments, and even craft some seasonal popcorn balls. You can find the links in the Growing Chatham newsletter. The World Food Prize North Carolina Youth Institute is coming up April 1st, 2022 at North Carolina State University. Be a hunger hero. All high school youth are invited to join us for the 2022 North Carolina Youth Institute, a program that provides a platform for youth to research and give recommendations to solve key global challenges that range from food insecurity, access to clean water, poverty, human rights, engineering issues, and more. For more details, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. It's been a busy season for the Chatham County Horse Cotillion. We were well represented on the North Carolina 4-H national teams at AQHA Congress in Ohio, as well as the Eastern National 4-H Roundup in Kentucky. Our member, Victoria Smith, earned a coveted spot on the North Carolina national judging team. At Congress, their team placed 7th in Halter, 7th in performance, 5th in reasons is sixth overall. At Eastern Nationals, Victoria Smith placed eighth in halter and ninth overall. Their team easily won the championship after placing either champion or reserve in every subcategory. Samantha Durham earned a spot on the National Horse Bowl team. They won reserve champion at Congress and then went on to win the national championship by a large margin. This team was coached by horse couture leaders Mary Dickerson and Ruth Border Brug, who were selected based on club performance at the state level. Horse judging is a contest that requires participants to evaluate horses based on knowledge and facts. This involves judging good confirmation, breed character, and performance ideals in different breeds of horses. Contestants must then defend their placings in an oral presentation. This competition allows individuals to improve their critical thinking and communication skills while expanding their equine knowledge. Horse Bowl is a quiz bowl style competition of horse knowledge on a wide variety of topics, from physiology and genetics to horse industry standards. Participants learn the fundamentals of biology, nutrition, 
and equine health, as well as team cooperation and healthy competition. Selection for the North Carolina national teams requires competing at the district, state, and multi-state regional contest, plus numerous practices and tests, so these girls are truly the best of the best in North Carolina. We are very proud of what they have accomplished this fall. Our 4-H STEM Club Galactic Quest Workshop was out of this world. On October 28th, the 4-H STEM Club Galactic Quest Workshop attendees and 4-H staff and other members had a very special guest speaker. Our very own Mr. Rob Bergmuller invited his cousin, Dr. Rachel Kroniak, to talk about her research and the work she does for NASA. On October 28, Dr. Kroniak gave an outstanding presentation on the Mars missions and the past and current rovers on Mars. Currently, the Mars rover, named for Surveillance, is making its way around the Red Planet, taking core samples and pictures for NASA. To learn more, you can visit NASA's webpage by visiting the growing Chatham newsletter and clicking on the link. A big thank you to Dr. Kroniak for her time and insights, as well as Mr. Rob Bjorkmuller for coordinating this opportunity for our Chatham County 4-Hers. To read more, just visit the growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 1221. Check your dirt and see. This informative survey is for gardeners in North Carolina who want to learn about the types and sources of soil chemical contaminants that might be found in and around their own garden site. Evaluate relative risk and gardening practices that decrease the risk of exposure to soil contaminants. Find resources to test for soil contaminants in the garden. The information you provide about your garden will help identify potential risk of soil contaminants in your garden and provide advice about how to keep yourself and other gardeners safe while gardening and eating food grown in the garden. You will be asked what county your garden is located, the history of the site, how your garden is managed, and who gardens. For more details and to access the survey, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. Be on the lookout for the Tropical Spiderwort or Bengal Dayflower. The tropical spiderwort or bengal dayflower has recently been found in the triangle area landscapes, thought to have been introduced in pine straw mulch. This is a noxious weed that should be eradicated before it can spread. If you think you have seen it, please contact the North Carolina Department of Agriculture Weed Regulatory Services. You can call 919-707-3741. For the identifying characteristics, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter, where you can find photographs and more details. The Spotted Lanternfly is a threat to North Carolina landscapes. If you spot it, report it. Bad bug at n-c-a-g-r dot g-o-v. Spotted lanternfly is an invasive insect that was first detected in the United States in Pennsylvania in 2014. You will find a link in the Growing Chatham newsletter and one-hour video which will cover its life cycle and biology, host signs and symptoms, regulatory updates, and how we are preparing to combat the pest when it gets to North Carolina. Watch out for those jumping worms. Although earthworms are supposed to be a gardener's best friend, many species in the United States are not native, and some are destructive. One of the most notorious groups of earthworms are the so-called Asian crazy jumping worms, which we refer to as jumping worms. Locally, they are known sometimes as snake worms, Alabama jumpers, or Georgia jumpers. Despite some of these names, jumping worms are native to regions from East Asia through Australia, but have been moved by humans all over the world, especially in soil and planting pots. To find out more about these jumping worms, how they can damage your soil, and how to identify them, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link.
Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221 to access any of the stories in the Growing Chatham newsletter. They did it again! Fiddlehead Farm wins another National Good Food Award. Chatham County's Fiddlehead Farm has won their third National Good Food Award. Earlier this year, they won for their black garlic rooster sauce. The previous years, they have won for their roasted strawberry preserves and strawberry honeysuckle jelly. The awards are given annually to winners in several categories. Beer, cider, charcuterie, cheese, chocolate, coffee, confections, drinks, elixirs, fish, grains, honey, oils, pantry, pickles, preserves, snacks, and spirits. Close to 200 winners are chosen from over 2,000 entries from all 50 states. Fiddlehead Farms, Emily and David Boyton, have produced many different hot sauces over the years. And last year, David had the idea to substitute black garlic for some of the regular garlic in their rooster sauce recipe to take it up a notch. It was a success. They made the black garlic and also grow the habanero peppers used in the black sauce. Black garlic is produced by aging fresh garlic through an extended warming period of 140 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit in high humidity for one to two weeks. The finished garlic is tender and dark brown in color with a rich, tangy, slightly sweet flavor that lends umami to dishes. Black garlic cloves can be chopped, smashed, or pureed and added to sauces, soups, stews, pastas, and sautéed vegetables. Emily makes a wide variety of preserves, hot sauces, and finishing salts in her kitchen in Pittsburgh. All of Fiddlehead Farms products are made in small batches, which means the focus is on high-quality, seasonal ingredients. Emily sources her ingredients from local, organic, and sustainable farms, with the exception of fruits like citrus and cranberries that are not grown in North Carolina. You can read more just by accessing the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. The Chatham Conservation Partnership Healthy Yard Alternatives webinar recording is now available for you to view. Chatham County Conservation Partnership conducted a webinar on Healthy Yard Alternatives on October 21st, 2021, and we had a great turnout of about 140 folks. Now, everyone can view the recording. Barbara Driscoll of the New Hope Audubon Society talked about the benefits of leaving your leaves. Chatham County Cooperative Extension Horticulture Agent Matt Jones talked about lawn alternatives. CCP Steering Committee member Allison Weekly shared a local landowner example of a wildflower meadow and Chatham County Cooperative Extension Sustainable Agriculture Agent Debbie Roos gave a virtual tour of her Pollinator Paradise Demonstration Garden through the seasons. You can access the link to view this webinar through the growing Chatham newsletter. Ginger and turmeric, a high-value crop for local growers. In January 2011, Debbie Roos was at a conference in Chattanooga, Tennessee, when she spotted Maine grower Susan Anderson's East Branch Ginger Booth at the trade show. Susan was selling certified, organic, disease-free ginger seed stock. Debbie was intrigued because she knew a couple of forward-thinking farmers were experimentally growing ginger in North Carolina but very little was known about it. Debbie hung around Susan's booth during her presentation until the crowds had cleared away and then she introduced herself. She told her that she was an agriculture agent with North Carolina Cooperative Extension and asked if she would be willing to do a presentation on growing ginger at a cooperative extension workshop in Chatham County, North Carolina. She said yes. Long story short, a mere two months later, they did their first ginger production workshop in Chatham County. She and her husband and two kids ended up moving to Chatham County that May and then went on to do two more workshops in 2012 on growing ginger and turmeric. In all, about 250 growers from across the state attended these workshops. East Branch Ginger has now transitioned
transitioned to producing microgreens and edible flowers, and Susan and Debbie have become good friends. Many growers are now growing these specialty crops across the state. Debbie recently was out at Granite Springs Farm in Pittsburgh while grower Meredith Late was harvesting ginger and turmeric. Meredith attended the ginger and turmeric workshops in 2011 and 2012 and has grown these crops every year since. Meredith tells Debbie that they are the most high-value crops that she produces. She sells ginger and turmeric at the Pittsburgh Farmer's Market to local restaurants through her community-supported agriculture program and to Farmer Food Share. Local breweries have made tasty beer for Meredith's ginger. Ginger and turmeric are available online from the Granite Springs Farm online store. Customers wanting five pounds or more should contact her directly for wholesale pricing and delivery options. You can click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to read more. Chatham County Farm Field Day for North Carolina Farm School. The North Carolina Farm School is a cooperative extension entrepreneurial program for new and transitioning farmers with the mission of increasing the number of successful farmers in North Carolina. The school includes eight in-class sessions plus five farm field days. Debbie is part of the team of the agriculture agents conducting the 2021 Northern Piedmont Farm School. The agents take turns teaching classes. Debbie taught the class on developing your market. On Monday, October 18th, Debbie hosted the North Carolina Farm School Northern Piedmont students in Chatham County for a farm field day. They visited two operations, Meredith Late's Granite Spring Farms, a sustainable vegetable and mushroom farm that sells through CSA and to farmers markets and restaurants. They also visited Feral Moose's Dutch Buffalo Farm, a new native plant nursery that offers a unique community-supported ecology model. In between the two farm tours, they convened at the Chatham County Agriculture Conference Center Center for lunch and educational presentations. Gina Moore from Carolina Farm Stewardship Association talked about organic certification and Jody Moore of Rocky River Bee Farm talked about the business of bees. Lunch was catered by Angelina's Kitchen and sourced from several local suppliers including Granite Springs Farm, In Good Heart Farm, Screech Owl Greenhouse, East Branch Ginger, Marshall's Produce, Lee's Hill Top Farm, and Chicken Bridge Bakery. Interested in attending North Carolina Farm School? Click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter for details about the 2022 North Carolina Farm Schools, both the Northern Piedmont and Piedmont Schools. Information is available. Chatham County 2021 Holiday Farmers Markets Two of Chatham County's three farmers markets will be hosting special holiday markets to help folks get into the festive holiday spirit. The Pittsburgh Farmers Market will host their annual holiday craft market on Thursday, December 9th from 3 until 6 p.m. At their usual location at Main Street Station in downtown Pittsburgh, the market will feature unique crafts and gifts handmade by local artisans. This is in addition to the usual assortment of vendors selling produce, flowers, meat, dairy, and baked goods. The Chatham Mills Farmers Market will host a holidays at the market each Saturday in December from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Each week will feature visiting craft vendors in addition to the usual vendors. Check the market's website and Facebook page for a listing of craft vendors each week in December. The Farrington Farmers Market is now year-round market and will be open every Tuesday from 3 until 5 p.m. until spring when they resume their normal hours of 4 to 6. Vendors will be taking pre-orders for holiday pies and similar items, so visit the market website for details and vendor information. Come on out to the markets to support our local farmers and artisans. You can click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter to access the Farmer Markets websites. Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221 to access any of the stories in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Grant Opportunity for Family Farms North Carolina Ag Ventures is a North Carolina State Extension Program that provides grants to North Carolina independent farmers for new and innovative agricultural project ideas, which will increase farm profits. The program will award a minimum of 40 grants. The maximum award is $8,000. 
Farmers from Chatham County are eligible to apply. The deadline is 8 p.m. December 15th, 2021. For more information, visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link. Join us for a virtual self-paced series, Beef Beyond the Basics. This series will focus on more advanced beef cattle management topics. There will be two live virtual sessions and multiple resources to choose from and explore at your own pace. This first live session will be held on Thursday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. Please contact Liz Joseph to register at 914-489-5330 or email Liz at Liz underscore Joseph at ncsu.edu. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter for more details. Visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221. Tis the season to hang sticky bands to prevent canker worm. It's hard not to love this time of year between the spectacle of fall colors and the reprieve of cooling temperatures. And although trees are losing leaves, now is an important time to take precautionary measures if canker worms are your tree's number one enemy each spring. To learn more, visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. Upcoming Forestry Webinar. Ask for Wood. Mass Timber and Modular Construction. Ask for Wood, Ask for Paper is a new project sponsored by Keeping Forest. This webinar is the first in a series that aims to arm the broader forestry community, including landowners, with information on the benefits of wood construction and the use of paper and packaging in all projects, which they can then use to advocate with local community leaders and decision makers. This webinar will explain the basics of mass timber, the market potential of mass timber, and showcase actions participants can take to promote the use of mass timber and wood in general in their communities and with their political leaders. This webinar is December 1st, 2021 at 1 p.m. You can click on the link to register in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Another upcoming webinar, Forest Health in the South, preparing for future challenges, coming up December 15th, 2021 at 2 p.m. This webinar will discuss predicted changes in the Southern Forest Resource, how they may impact forest health, current tools for detecting forest health issues, and a plan for responding to possible pandemics in pines. You can click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1221. The North Carolina State Fair Chatham County Pony Express participants. Elise Overton of Apex, North Carolina, started entering the State Fair in 2019, and the list of what to enter grows every year. Because she loves agriculture and crafts, there is plenty to consider. Next year, she plans to show a goat. Elise got involved in 4-H in 2018 and decided to join a livestock group called the Chatham County Charging Champions the following year. I won't be surprised if Elise makes this a career somehow and becomes a 4-H agent, says her mom, Christy Overton. She definitely needs to do something outdoors as it is her element. Rick Harbour from Pittsburgh started leatherwork as a hobby in the early 1980s while in Lubbock, Texas. When he retired in 2006, he began to turn his hobby into an obsession, opening a retail store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He moved to North Carolina at the end of January 2020, just in time for the fun we've all had over the last year and a half. The tooled oak leaf purse was Rick's first entry in the North Carolina State Fair. Leather carving and constructing leather projects has been a hobby that Rob Bergmuller from Apex has enjoyed for over 25 years. Rob says after all of these years, he still finds that he continues to improve his technique. There are times where he will pull a piece of leather out of his scrap bin, select a pattern, and start carving just for the practice. 
There are many different styles of leather carving, including the Southwest style, as well as the Sheridan style. When carving the Southwest style, the leaves and flowers being carved are usually large, and there's a lot of open area in the background. On the Sheridan style, the flowers and leaves are generally small and in figure eight patterns with limited backgrounds stamped in the leather. Rob enjoys carving both, but Sheridan is his favorite. He also enjoys making reproduction pieces, like the one that can be seen in the growing Chatham newsletter. It's a possible bag that a black powder hunter would use to carry his tools, spare flints, and etc. for a day or two in the woods. Along with construction projects, Rob also enjoys sharing ideas and teaching others how to carve and how to assemble their projects. Rob explains, with leather carving, there are many nuances that one can learn as well as improving on your own technique to make your projects more attractive and enjoyable to create. This is a hobby where you can always learn something and you can repair leather goods as well. When you need a gift, given enough time, you can make something that someone will enjoy for a long time. If you enjoy using your hands to make something creative, this is something you are sure to enjoy for a lifetime. Be sure to check out what these Chatham County Pony Express participants entered into the state fair by visiting Go dot ncsu dot edu forward slash growing chatham 1221 it's the season for holiday food gifts this month in the Growing Chatham newsletter is a guide for safely made food gifts. Gifts from your kitchen can be fun and a thoughtful way to share holiday cheer. Be sure to safely gift your delicious foods by checking out this guide for safely made gifts. Homemade gifts are common around the holidays. Many options such as homemade spice mixes, baking mixes, and breads have minimal food safety risk. Items such as home canned or dried foods infused items and some baked goods should be handled carefully to prevent illness. To read more about these safety tips, be sure to visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. This month, Tara shares with us spiced walnuts. This makes an excellent holiday gift. You just place spiced nuts in a small jar with a ribbon and tag or a holiday thing bag to give to your loved ones. Just click on the link for the spiced walnuts recipe. In the Growing Chatham newsletter, by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing chatham 1221. Here are a few quick tips from Brandy Keeg, our County Extension Administrative Assistant, on how to stay on track this holiday season. Making a holiday budget is very important to keep yourself on track. If you go into the holidays with a plan for your finances, you will be able to relax more and not stress out over your personal finances throughout the season. Set a gift budget. Make a list of all the people that you plan to buy gifts for. Then put a dollar amount of what you plan to spend for that gift by their name. This will allow you to have a visual of how much you could possibly be spending. Before you start shopping, Shopping, take some time to brainstorm gift ideas for those gifts and the amount of money that you have planned to spend on those gifts. This way, when you start to shop, you will have a plan. And we tend to spend less when we have a list of items that we plan to purchase. This also helps us not buy those impulse items that the stores hopes that we fall for. As you start purchasing your gifts on your list, you will be able to see if you are staying on track with your budget. This time of year can be very stressful, but we hope that with a little pre-planning, you will be able to enjoy the holidays and your family and make wonderful memories together. We wish you and your families a happy holidays. Looking rearward 104 plus 60 years. I'm sure that does not make sense to you, but just wait. In the Chatham Grits, December 26, 1917 edition, there is a write-up written by A.D. Phillips from Bennett. According to the information on findagrave.com, Albert Phillips was a shoemaker, a farmer, a postmaster, and he was also a correspondent with many local newspapers reporting on activities of the Bear Creek, Bennett, and Ramsour areas using the pen name Longshanks. 
Albert was received as a member of Bennett Baptist Church in July 1912, and he was married to Sarah Campbell in 1861. Now, Mr. Phillips wrote this article at the age of 75. He was looking back at a time when he was a child celebrating Christmas. You'll have to read the entire article to really appreciate it. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what Christmases were like for him compared to the Christmases in 1917, and then compare it to Christmases in more recent times, and how much has changed because of technology. From the Chatham Grit, December 1917. And here it is again, Christmas, a time that is looked forward to by all as a time of pleasure. We are all familiar with the customs of the present day, which we don't purpose to talk about. But we really know if the little boys and girls of the present day could only step back into the past, say 60 years, and see their grandparents and parents, uncles and aunts, when they were little folks with their Christmas presents, they would split their sides with laughter. But dear children, if we could step back to those old-time Christmas Eve nights, oh, how you would see no running from your fine Christmas trees, which you tell us old Santa Claus has brought you. See, old Santa Claus was not born when I, well, as many of your parents were little boys and girls. We never knew anything about hanging up stockings on Christmas Eve night. And if we had known the legs were so short, they would not have held much. Our stockings were hand-spun and knit by our good mothers. But let me tell you, we had something that kept our feet dry and warm. Our little girls had rag dolls made at home and were prized and thought as much of them as the fine and costly dolls are now. And one good thing about them, if they dropped one, there was no danger of a broken arm or cracked head. What candies we got 60 years ago were made of molasses boiled in pots. And what a time we had pulling candy. Ask your grandparents now if they ever went to a candy pulling. Oh, what a change in 50 and 60 years in customs. Yes, while I was sitting by my window last week, while the beautiful snow was on the ground, when I could see children wading through it with short, thin skirts, knee pants, thin, long cotton stockings, and some with white cloth shoes. Then, we, who were little boys and girls 60 years ago, our minds flash back to those deep and long snows, which often would lie on the ground a whole month when our mothers would have ready for their dear little boys and girls good homespun, homemade woolen clothes, yarn stockings, and thick bottom shoes to wear. How well can we aged people recollect when we were boys and girls, when we went to church with our parents? Our clothing was cut and made to fit just like our fathers and mothers. No knee pants, no short skirts, or low neck dresses then. Our most enjoyable times during our childhood days were going with our fathers and mothers to two kinds of parties that were customary, one being corn shellings and the other cotton pickings. After Christmas, farmers would shell up all their corn except enough to feed the horses and mules on. Often, I have gone with father and mother to corn shellings when the hall of the house would contain enough corn to shell 25 to 50 bushels. And then what a time they would have in chatting and shelling corn and eating those good old suppers. Wow. Then all planted the patch of cotton for home use. And there being no cotton gins, the seed were picked out by the fingers. So that was another party we were allowed to go to. And oh, how we did enjoy it for all of us children were after supper sent to the kitchen to play like many of you ought to be doing now. We would play games like Frog in the Meadow, Blindfold, and you bet we enjoyed it as well, if not more than you do, who spend your money at moving picture shows and other present day pastimes. And while you children are blessed with the good graded schools with all the useful books, which we are so proud you have, our minds turn back to our old time school days with the old blue back spellers and a few others while we learned to write with the old goose quill pens. 
Wish I had one now. In the old log, one door schoolhouses. What a difference. In those days, it was no trouble for us to walk from three to four miles to church, and many a mother, aunt, and sisters would go barefooted until they got within sight of the church and then put on their shoes and stockings. And now many of you big up children wouldn't go to church unless you ride in an automobile with from 5 to $10 shoes and silk stockings. Many other changes we could mention, but time forbids. When I was reading this article, it made me stop and think about how much has changed. Since I was a kid, I was born in 1972, and I think about the things I asked Santa for, such as a Barbie, the Play-Doh Dennis toy, and the one thing that made me feel like the coolest kid ever, a boom box that Santa brought to me. I was able to carry that huge portable radio with me everywhere and play the music as loud as I could. Well, until the neighbors started to complain. You know, I had my first child in 1998, and the things that he wanted were video game related, such as a Game Boy, a Wii, the various PlayStations. He's 23 now, and he still loves his video games. My youngest, on the other hand, he was born in 2001, and he had an obsession with school buses. Well, thanks to technology and computers, he was pretty computer savvy. One weekend, he was spending time with his grandparents, and he hopped onto their computer and filled out a form for a MasterCard. I never imagined this would happen. He was nine years old. He said he was playing a video game, but he was answering all the questions like your employment, your birthday, your address, your phone number. Well, he used various family members' information, and do you know MasterCard? They approved it. He received the MasterCard in the mail at his grandparents' house, and he was eating dinner with them, and his grandmother said, Andrew, you received mail here. And she handed him the envelope at the dinner table. He opened it, looked at it, and she said he became very quiet, which was unusual for him. Well, after dinner, he approached his grandmother and asked, How do you use a credit card? And she said, Andrew, why are you asking? He pulled out that MasterCard. His plans were to bid on a school bus that he found on eBay. The school bus was located in Pennsylvania. It wasn't a toy. It was a real school bus for $16,000. He was going to use that MasterCard, bid on the school bus, but thankfully the school bus had been sold. The MasterCard was finally canceled after several calls and Andrew learned a lesson very quickly how credit cards can get you into trouble. Technology. It has changed our world. Our world has gone from candy pulling parties, to corn shucking parties, to now parties online, a way to stay connected with friends and family across the country and across the world. Technology is a good thing and a bad thing. The bad is because you're losing the human touch, but yet you can still see folks through technology by using your computers for like Zoom or FaceTime. So however you decide to spend this holiday season with family, either through technology or in person. Cherish every moment you're with them because one day they may not be here and all you'll have are the memories. So make some great family memories this holiday season, either virtually or in person. Happy holidays! To read the full article written in the Chatham Grit by A.D. Phillips and to see a picture of Mr. Phillips, please visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 1221. Here's what's happening from our community partners. On November 18th, 2021, Chatham County government launched a redesigned website. Along with a sleek update in appearance, the new website is designed to make it easier for residents, businesses, and other members of the public to find what they need. Just visit the growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link for direct access to the new website. From the Chatham County Public Health Department, COVID-19 booster doses are available. To find out more about the COVID-19 vaccine boosters, just visit the growing Chattel newsletter for access to links. 
Take the 2021 Community Assessment. Anyone who lives, plays, works, or prays in Chatham County is eligible to participate in the 2021 Community Assessment by completing a survey to share your thoughts and opinions about health and well-being in Chatham County, participating in a story circle similar to a focus group, or by taking and submitting a photo through the Chatham Snapshots Project. Those who submit a photo will be entered into a $20 Visa gift card drive that will take place every Monday through December 20th, and a $40 grand prize drawing that will take place on Friday, December 31st. For more information, please click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. The Chatham Health Alliance wants you to share your thoughts. The supplemental survey is part of the 2021 community assessment process. Every three years, a group that includes the Chatham Health Alliance, the Chatham County Public Health Department, and Chatham Hospital produces the Chatham County Community Assessment, a collaborative report that provides a snapshot of the county and its residents. What is needed, what challenges are faced, what strengths and opportunities exist in the community, and what can be done together to make life better. Take the 2021 Community Assessment Supplemental Survey to share your thoughts and opinions about health and well-being in Chatham County. You can find a link in the growing Chatham newsletter. This is just a reminder. Before entering any Chatham County government building, please be aware that masks are required. To access the links mentioned in this podcast, please visit go.ncsu.org edu forward slash growing chatham 1221 well that's it for this year really this is the last month of 2021 hard to believe this is tiffany hancock and i'll talk to you again in 2022 hope you all have a great holiday season and don't forget to check us out online you can find the link in the growing chatham newsletter happy holidays